Now I'm here to talk to you again about snail games. Have you heard of snail games? I know I have. They're basically this big Chinese holding company that wants to, you know, take over the survival game genre. They fund and own a bunch of studios that make survival games. You might have heard of some of them. One's called Ark Survival Evolved, Pixark, you know, uh, Dark and Light, Outlaws of the Old West, all, of course, fantastic titles. Bit of sarcasm in there somewhere. See if you can get it. They also released Last Oasis, although there's some confusion here because the developers for Last Oasis say, we're not owned by Snail Games. We'll get to that because I think you're a liar. But I digress. Why we're talking about this today is that most Snail Games products seem to be just doing things to their consumers and their fans that I don't like very much and is very, very anti-consumer and just basically very insert word that begins with C that will get my video demonetized because YouTube doesn't like English people, Australian people, or basically anybody from these islands that uses this amazing word. If you know, you know. But people have been DMing me about this all the time, so I figured I'd give the lowdown, which is why you can see a million tabs open. Let's do this. It'll be fun editing out when I'm trying to find what I'm actually looking for that I've seen as we go. So Last Oasis released and it didn't go very well. I actually covered the game at the time because I used to play games on these YouTube channels, of course, not done that for a long time. I wonder if we're going to bring that back. I miss the old Kira. Get that comment all the time. This is just a video of ta side tangents, I guess. What the fuck is going on? That's why I don't record videos at 12 o'clock at night. But basically, when this game was about to launch, they sent me a code and were like, oh, do you want to check out Last Oasis? And I said, yes, I like survival games. Let's do that. And then I played it for a few days with a couple of friends and we really enjoyed it. Thought it was a fantastic experience quite early. But considering the game was early access, you know, is early access still, that's fine, right? Because you know what you're getting. You're going to get some bugs, maybe a little bit of uh, lack of content, but it's probably going to be worth the box price to get in and have some fun, especially on launch, because these things, like an MMO, are usually fun at launch, because that's when there's, you know, the discovery and there's the most people playing. So I released a video saying Last Oasis is really good, but unfortunately that didn't age very well. Age like milk, as the kids say. They launched on the 26th of March and the servers were so fucked that nobody could really play. It was laggy, they were crashing if you even got into the game. And then of course, they just took the game down for, I believe it was about a week, but it could have been a little bit longer. And they said, you know, we're gonna fix it and we're gonna release it again. To that I say, are you dumb, stupid or dumb? You could essentially have done like a limited play test for a free weekend or something without charging anyone any money. People would have still got upset because even if you give somebody something for free, if it doesn't work, they're gonna moan about it. But before you had actual consumers paying money for something, you could have figured out the service didn't work. But instead, you gave it to a limited number of influencers. Fuck that word, but that's what they call us. And we put out positive coverage of a game that was pretty good. And then that made us look silly, which I'm not a big fan of, to be honest. Even though it was out of my control, I couldn't know the servers weren't going to work. And then by the time the game had released again, a lot of people had moved on and were just playing other things and had kind of forgotten. So essentially, if you look at the numbers of Last Oasis you can see that when it released, they were in a unique position that not a lot of games get. They had 33,000 concurrent players, which would put it in the top couple percent, I believe, of games that release on Steam in terms of like initial hype. You were in a good spot to do real well. And by the time they'd got it working properly and they still had some issues, mind you, it was basically, you know, down already by quite a large percentage. Unfortunately, it continued to go down because there just wasn't that much content, which, again, early access, it's understandable. And you'll see this with a lot of survival games. The ones that are good eventually bounce back and go up because people are always looking for these types of games to play. So they give them another chance and they go back for big patches, which, as you can see here, happened. They had the opportunity here, if any of these patches had revitalized the game, for the game to, like, go super well again and, and continue to climb up. But they just couldn't seem to do it. They couldn't get the game to work in a way that people really enjoyed and kept them playing all the time. But when you're getting down to like hundreds of players online in a game like this, you know you've done fucked up. Now let's get to the bad things. The things that make me say you're a bad company and you should feel bad. As soon as things start going terribly for products people have paid money for, what they do is they start digging into your company and your history. And they found, of course, that Donkey Crew had made other games, one of which being called Of Kings and Men, which they tried to crowdfund on Kickstarter originally, failed, and then released the game again on Steam Early Access, 
and it wasn't very good and they tried to change the game a couple times nobody played it and then they just pulled it off steam and fucked off and made last oasis so you've already got a bit of a pattern forming here but hey i'm i'm fine with second chances if you you know made a game and it just didn't go to plan it's not a crime you didn't do the worst thing in the world people fail and people were still playing last oasis even after seeing this they were hopeful for season five which of course they were doing the game in seasons and then season five released and they did like this big push marketing they had the game on the steam survival weekend or whatever that put the game 50 percent off in value and they got the biggest push of plays they had for basically since release of the game unfortunately it didn't matter and also people discovered in this time that they'd not really been spending a lot of resources developing this game anymore they instead had been spending their resources making another game so they'd done it again which as you can see this looks kind of cool not gonna buy it of course because fuck these people but it does look kind of cool and here we have it donkey crew allegedly this is a bit of a rip of their previous game although this one's going to be single and co-op i believe as opposed yeah single and co-op instead of being like a big survival game because they probably learned their lesson that they just couldn't handle what they tried to do previously and if they were still developing last oasis that would you know that'd be okay but of course, as you can see from the charts at this point, when they weren't really working on the game anymore, they still had thousands of people that were buying the game, playing the game, and wanted to play the game that they were sold that was in early access, which is somewhat of a promise to say we will continue to develop if you give us money now. It's not the finished product now, but it will be one day, which of course is a promise that a lot of game developers just fucking ignore and just do whatever they want. And then when you start looking into it a little bit further, it gets worse than this because they've not posted an announcement on their Discord since november 23rd 2022 they've not posted shit on their twitter since october 21st 2022 in tweets or replies so they're not even replying to anybody and they don't post in their discord they're not even really moderating it as you can see people are just changing their name to you know talk shit about the product what is bell right are they still developing the game no donkey crew equals deceitful crooks which is a great discord name really and then something looks real interesting because when you go to the bell riot uh, discussions on steam there's just one post but then if you go to any social media that isn't controlled by the donkey crew team you'll see that everybody who posts anything even if it's positive gets banned from the bell right section i have a bunch of examples here we've got somebody posted ha 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 you were banned reason off topic how about this classic you've been banned by a bell right developer off topic lots of off-topic off bans here personally how i manage my community is when somebody says something that's off topic i say can you stop doing that please here's another one you've been banned off topic and of course they're banning some of these people for criticism and while this is technically off topic it does just look like you're trying to silence people from saying things that you don't like which is true you've abandoned multiple games at this point especially considering the timing of you pushed like a big sale on your game with an update that at that time didn't even have a steam profile now there's also an, a really interesting thing here that makes me think that these developers are just not being completely honest you see a pogo son he says we're not owned by snail games though they're just a regular investor like any hedge fund could have been or any other company now i didn't know whether this was true or not so i looked up the sec report which you have to file to do business and in the snail games one it says our games arc survival evolved our flagship franchise uh, and then it talks about last oasis developed in connection with our wholly owned subsidiary donkey crew now i don't know if i'm taking crazy pills here take me back to the 80s where that saying comes from but if you're a subsidiary that means you have a parent company and when you're a wholly owned subsidiary that means you're owned by that parent company wholly meaning all of it even with atlas here you can see there's a distinction between whether they'd say wholly or in partnership they say developed in partnership with grape shot games which looks like atlas might not be 100 percent owned by snail games but when the company that owns you is saying in a report to the fucking united states securities and exchange commission we wholly own that company you can't turn around and say we're not owned by snail games though you you fucking are liar <laughs> based on what they're saying or are they just lie into the u.s government that doesn't seem like a fantastic idea but as you can see this was filed on september 16th 2022 and he sent that message on october 28th 2022 so we can't even make the excuse that oh they just bought them you know after he said this they already owned them so i don't know what pogo san's talking about which i will just show you he is a developer he is the red name as the other red names are as the developer role so it's not just some random guy talking shit they also of course had a free weekend at the point where they had the sale 
So they did this big push of like, everybody come play Last Oasis, come play this update we've just pushed, come give us money. We're not developing the game anymore, by the way, and after this we're not going to post on any of our social media, including anything in any general post or anything. And if you even speak about our other game, to warn people that we repeatedly uh, abandon our games in early access and don't finish them, even though people paid us to, we're going to ban you. Well, you can't ban me, so here's a YouTube video about it. And the reason this bothers me so much is I've been a big proponent of early access. I love early access games. I love the function and the fact that this exists because over the years, I can guarantee I've spent more time and way more money, of course, playing early access games than I have AAA games. Because AAA games for me, a lot of the time, outside of a few select developers like FromSoft, for example, are mostly just kind of copy-paste for me. They're the similar experiences that we've been playing for a real long time, and Early Access brings us something fresh that we're not getting, and focuses on some genres that I really do enjoy, like survival, for example. So I support Early Access games, always have done, probably always will do, but I don't like, obviously, when some companies show up, especially ones that are owned by big companies with big money, and just fuck around with the name of it because people get burned and then they might not support another game that has passionate developers that could have delivered the experience just based on that fact and then i have to see all the other people that show up in the comments like early access never even though some amazing games have come from early access that wouldn't have done if we didn't have this uh, platform and the ability to do this so i really don't like when companies do this and it seems like snail games for whatever reason is a serial offender of doing shit like this whether it's Snail Games that does this stuff and makes these decisions, or the company that, that they definitely wholly own according to the SEC reports, I don't know. I'm going to guess, though, based on how ownership works, that it is their decision. So that's it. I'm going to stop talking about Snail Games now. It's probably going to be a while before I make another video about this company, hopefully at least. But I would suggest you don't buy their next game, because if it doesn't do supremely well, they will probably abandon it. So there we go. Thanks for watching, as always. See you next time. Peace out. Oh wait guys, I, I've just I've just found this. I wanted to just double check before I publish this. Ignore everything I said in this video about uh, Donkey Crew being owned by... <laughs> I can't say this with a fucking straight face. Ignore everything I said about Donkey Crew being owned by Snail Games. I lied. They are not wholly owned. They lied in their SEC report. They do not wholly own this company. This developer that posted and said, oh yeah, we're not owned by Snail Games though. He is 100% right. They're, they they snail games only own 99 percent of donkey crew so i put my hands up i was incorrect they've got me there somebody somewhere does own one percent of the stock so they've fucking done me on the technicality there <laughs> fuck it oh man i love being a youtuber because i'd never experience anything like this if i if i wasn't and just was randomly looking through sec documents so yeah i'm a liar whoever's out there with that one percent you've fucking done me on this one